In this video, we are going to look at how to find angles formed by lines on the Cartesian plane using the angles of inclination of those lines. So if we look at this first example, it says given A, B, C and D, and we are given their coordinates, determine the angle X formed between lines AC and BD. Now you will notice that X is not an angle of inclination because it is not measured from the x-axis in an anticlockwise direction to a line. It is merely an angle between two lines. So we need to calculate x. And to do so, we are going to use the angles of inclination of the lines that form the angle x. So the angle of inclination of BD sits there. And we can give it any name that we like, so I'm going to call it alpha. The angle of inclination of the other line that forms x is AC, and the angle of inclination sits here. We can call it anything we like, so I'm going to call it B. Now, you need to relate the angles of inclination, alpha and beta, using geometry theorems to find the angle x. Now, there is more than one way in which you can do that, okay? One way might be to draw a parallel line to the x-axis through the point of intersection of the line. So these lines are parallel. And we know that corresponding angles on parallel lines are equal. So if I have beta here, the corresponding angle to beta sits there, okay? And looking at alpha, the corresponding angle of alpha is here. Okay, now how might I relate the corresponding angle alpha and beta to x? Well, if I say alpha minus beta, I find this portion of the angle here. And that angle is the vertically opposite angle to x, which means it's equal to x. So if I find all the values, I can find the vertically opposite angle to x and use that to find x. Now, of course, you would have to show all your steps of working and write down the reason for any statement that you make, okay? But there is nothing wrong with this method. But I would like to show you a simpler method. So the method that I like to use is the uses the theorem that an exterior angle of triangle is equal to the sum of the interior opposite angles. So if I look at my angles, I have a triangle for which the alpha here is the exterior angle. So the theorem says that alpha is equal to beta plus x because of the exterior angle of triangle theorem. So if I want to calculate x, I'm going to subtract beta, so I have alpha minus beta, which will give me x. Now to find alpha and beta, I use the fact that they are the angles of inclination, and if I know the gradient, I can calculate their sizes. So let's find alpha first. So tan alpha equals the gradient of the line BD, which I can calculate using the gradient formula. So the change in y coordinates is 4 minus negative 3. Change in x coordinates is negative 1 minus 6. That becomes 4 plus 3, which is 7, over negative 7, which simplifies to negative 1. Now, if to, sorry, to solve for alpha, you would say shift negative 1, and that would give you negative 45, but you would add 180 degrees and you would find that alpha is equal to 135 degrees. You might also just know that any angle of inclination of a line with a gradient negative 1 is going to be 135. So let's find beta. Now tan beta is equal to the gradient of the line AC. So using the gradient formula, I have the change in y coordinates, which is 3 minus negative 2, and then the change in x coordinates, which is 2 minus negative 5. 
that simplifies to 3 plus 2, which is 5, over 2 plus 5, which is 7. So to find beta, I'm going to press Shift 10. Let me just write it out for you. So this is what you would have on your calculator. Shift 10 of 5 sevenths, and that would give you a value or an angle of 35, comma, 5, 3, 7, and so forth degrees. Okay, never round off until your final answer because it can change the accuracy of your answer. Just use it as a general principle in any section of maths. So, but now, now I have alpha and I have the angle beta and I'm in a position to find x. So, therefore, x is equal to alpha minus beta. How do I know that? Exterior angle of triangle. And I substitute the values, so it's 135 degrees minus 35. 537 odd degrees and that simplifies to 99, 5 degrees. Angles are normally rounded off to one decimal place but of course you must um, follow the instructions on your assessment. If we look at a second example we are given the lines y equals x plus 2 and y equals 3x minus 3 intersect at A. Determine the sizes of BAC. Sorry, I think that should be the size of angle BAC. Where B and C are the intercepts on the x-axis as shown. So if we look at the diagram, we notice that we are not told which equation belongs to which line. So we will have to, by inspection, um, determine which line belongs to which equation. Okay, if I look at the gradients of the equations that we are given, my one gradient is 1, and the other gradient is m equals 3. Okay, so they are both positive graphs, um, sorry, both positive gradients, which means both my graphs are increasing, so that doesn't tell them apart. Okay, but what does tell them apart is either the, um, so the one is steeper than the other, okay, so three would be the steepest graph, so that would be the graph, um, yeah, so that would be this graph, okay. Um, the other way that you could identify which graph belongs to which equation is to look at the y-intercepts. So we notice here the one y-intercept is 2 and the other y-intercept is negative 3. So that very clearly tells them apart. So our line BA is the y equals x plus 2 line and the line passing through A and between 0 and C is the line y equals 3x minus 3. Okay. Right, but now we need to calculate the angle BAC. Okay, and again, you might notice that BAC is not an angle of inclination, but we can use the angles of inclination of the lines that form the angle BAC to find BAC. Okay, so those would be the angle of inclination of this line. Okay, um... So, so that's the line AC, okay, and we can call this anything, so let's call it theta, and the angle of inclination of the line BA is here, and we can call it anything, so let's call it alpha. Now, from the previous example, we used the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the in sum of the interior opposite angles theorem, and you'll see that we can use that same working here, okay? We have the triangle BAC, and its exterior angle is theta. So again, we have theta equals alpha plus the angle BAC, so exterior angle of triangle. So if I want to calculate the angle BAC, I'm going to subtract alpha. Now, theta and alpha are angles of inclination, 
which we can calculate if we know the gradients of the lines, which we do from their equations. So tan theta is equal to the gradient of AC, which is 1, sorry, which is 3. And shift tan of 3 gives me 71,565 and so forth degrees. Okay, then I can calculate alpha. Tan alpha is equal to the gradient of the line y equals x plus 2, and its gradient is 1. And you can use your calculator to find shift tan 1, but you might also just simply know that the angle of inclination of any line with a gradient of 1 is 45. So, Therefore, BAC, angle BAC, is equal to theta minus alpha. Now, if you haven't already written the reason here, then you must write it here. But if you've got it up there, you don't have to repeat it. So theta is 71,565 odd degrees minus 45. Put that into your calculator and round off to one decimal place. You should get 26,6 degrees. A last example, we are given A, B, and C are vertices of triangle A, B, C. And it says determine the size of angle A, B, C. Okay. So this seems slightly more complex because if we wanted to use exterior angle of a triangle theorem, it's not as obvious. Okay but we can still use it. Okay, so again, there are going to be various methods that you can use to find angle A, B, C. I would just like to show you how you can apply the exterior angle of a triangle method even to such a question. Okay, so we are still going to use the angles of inclination of the lines that form the angle that we're looking for. Okay, so what I'm going to do to find the angle of inclination of AB, I'm going to extend AB to the x-axis, okay? And its angle of inclination sits there. Okay, so I just want to erase it. Okay, and let's call this angle alpha, okay? So if we're looking for a, angle ABC, the other line that forms the angle ABC is the line BC. So to find its angle of inclination, we are also going to extend it past the x-axis. So we can easily see the angle of inclination there sits here. And let's call it theta. Okay. So using the exterior angle of triangle equals the interior opposite angle. Okay. I can find the angle x there. Okay, now x is not the angle that I'm ultimately looking for, but it relates to the angle I'm looking for, ABC, angle ABC, by being its supplement. Okay, so I'm ultimately looking for the angle ABC, okay, but I can use the exterior angle of a triangle theorem to find the supplement of the angle I'm looking for, and then use angles on a straight line to find ABC. So, um... We have, oops, sorry, that theta equals x plus alpha, exterior angle of triangle, okay? So to find x, I'm going to subtract alpha, so I have theta minus alpha. So to find theta and alpha, there are the angles of inclination of, the, of lines. So I'm going to use the formula tan of the angle of inclination equals the gradient of its line. So theta is on AC. So I want the gradient of AC. And that is the change in Y coordinates. So 2 minus 1 over the change in X coordinates. So negative 2 minus 2. That gives me 1 over negative a quarter. Okay. And to find theta, I then use shift tan of negative a quarter. Okay. That gives me negative 36,869 odd degrees. 
it's a negative angle. We can never have a negative angle of inclination, so you must remember to add 180 degrees, and that gives us 143,13 odd degrees. Okay, then to find alpha, tan alpha is equal to the gradient of the line AB, whose gradient is the change in y coordinates, so 5 minus 2 over the change in x coordinates, which is 4 minus negative 2. Simplifying that, we have 3 over 6, which is a half. So if I find alpha, solve for alpha, I sh use shift tan of a half, and that gives us 26,565 odd degrees. Okay, so we have x equals theta minus alpha, and that is 143,13 odd minus 26,565 odd degrees. And that gives us a value of 116,565. So that is not the final angle that we're looking for. The angle that we are still looking for is angle A, B, C. Now how do A, angle A, B, C and X relate? They are angles on a straight line, which add up to 180 degrees. So angle ABC is going to be 180 minus the angle X, which is so angles on a straight line or supplementary angles. Okay, so this is 180 degrees minus 116,565 degrees and round off to one decimal place unless told otherwise.